And nobody can kiss and come and go to the. Hi, I'm Megan Tapo, 2016 100 meter hurdles national champion and Olympian. And this is Ask Me Anything on 876 Stream. What's the toughest race you've ever been in? The toughest race I've ever been in. That's so. Like, it depends. Um. Mentally, the toughest race would probably have been Olympic semifinals. That was terrifying for me. I had like deep imposter, imposter syndrome, where I was crying in front of the mirror the night before the race, all kind of madness. And when I got there, I was just too nervous, too shaken up to kind of focus on what it is that I needed to do. And I mean, if I just relaxed and did what I could do, I would, probably would have made it to the final. But you know, we live and we learn. That was, that was, that was rough, that race. <laughs> Who has been the most influential athlete to train alongside? Is that a question? Is that really a question? Guess, guess. If you've been on my social media, just guess. Shelly Ann, obviously. I mean, everything about her is just, like she was, I feel like she was born to run. She was born to be who she is. I mean, she, I'm, I'm sure she could be something else, but, Everything, who she is, um, everything for Shelly is just, she's just so inspirational, so motivational, so helpful, so caring, so funny. She's um, like, there was one point where she wasn't herself at training and you could literally, the whole session was like a different vibes. That different vibes. And then when she come back and she start talking and she had the vibes, like you just laugh in training, training is more fun with Shelly Aaron. So yeah. Would you rather a Olympic bronze medal or a world championship gold medal? You know? Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> I don't know. I mean I feel like I'd have to ask somebody like Shelly, um What's the difference between the two medals? You know what I mean? And in a way, the pros and the cons. Because I'm that type of person, I can't make a decision just out of the whim. I get extremely flustered and not make the right decision and then stress over it for weeks. So, I can't do that. <laughs> I want both. I want everything. I want gold. I want. Uh. <laughs> so, if you weren't a professional athlete, what job would you want to do? I would be a motivational speaker slash life coach. Well, I kind of am. No, not kind of am. I am. So link me. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I like to see people achieve what they know they can achieve. Because a lot of times you have it in you, you know you have it in you, but there's so many blockages, there's so many situations or circumstances that you can't see yourself overcoming to become that. And I want to be that person to help you overcome that, to push past all the obstacles. Um, and I'm in, I know you asked me what would I do if I wasn't an athlete, but I feel like I'm in the prime position now to say, yo, I did it so you can. You know what I mean? So and that's the yeah, I want to be. I, want, I would be a life coach slash motivational speaker. I definitely would have done psychology in school. Yeah. Do you have any, any advice? Um, okay, so for any athlete who wants to become a professional athlete, firstly, you need support. So you need a team. You need a mental person. You need a physical person, which is like a coach. Mental coach, physical coach, spiritual coach, um, what, other, what, other, uh, what other all is there. You need all of those stuff because at the end of the day, you can't do it alone. You need people to be there. When you want to give up, they say no. This is what happened. Put things into perspective for you and keep pushing you to where they know you can be and to where you want to be. Um, and for hurdles specifically, just keep practicing. Like hurdles is a thing that the more you do it, the more you get better. And you can't get better by just sitting down and say, oh, I want to be a hurdler, going to training, and that's it. No, go home, do your drills, hurdle over anything you can find. I remember when I just, when I made my first character team and Fennel, Stefan Fennel at that time was hot, like in, in hurdles 
to realm like Fenya was the king of hurdles and went to character together and he would hurl over everything I'm like okay I'm gonna start doing that because clearly the practice it gets you into a specific groove gets you into a mental thing it makes your body know okay this is what I want to be doing at a high level and it will help you from the continuous repetition so keep on doing it keep on working hard and don't shirk work 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 it's not easy at all if you could be number one in any sport other than track and field what would it be hmm. Formula One. Yeah, I've been watching, they have a Netflix show. I was never interested in it before, but they had a Netflix, they have a Netflix show. And it's pretty cool. Like, it's so cool. And I like driving, I love driving fast in a controlled manner. So if we're in go-karts or something like that, you know, I'll be killing it. Yes, I always win at go-karts because I'm just awesome. Well, yeah, Formula One and or NFL, to be honest, like, I've been watching NFL on Netflix as well. Like, Mafia has been encouraging me to watch some NFL shows. And it's just so cool. And it's really so cool. <laughs> I don't want to be like a... Oh, what do you call him again? Jeez. Ride receiver. I don't want to be a ride receiver. <laughs> and, can, and nobody can catch me come and go through it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and score a touchdown and I was quick over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you have any superstitions? Ah, uh, no. So, well, all right. When I eat national gears, I don't like wearing anything else other than the crop, the yellow crop top, and the boy shirt. Why? Because I feel like every time I wear the body suit, I don't run as well as when I wear the cut off and the tights. So, evidence of this is in the semi-finals in London. Um, I didn't make the finals and I, I don't attribute it to the clothes, but I'm like, you know, I had a feeling I should have worn the thick cut and I didn't wear it and I was just like, mm. Not really, but yeah. <laughs> if you're stuck on an island, which jumping and happy would you want to discover? Shelly. <laughs> she like the job from no till I'm morning. We recently found out she can actually do a little thing in the kitchen. Yeah. And she, I mean, she come from water so she can, me probably can't defend myself, but you know what I mean? But she can. <laughs> Okay, so last year he was amazing. Last year he was kind, he was understanding, but he was new. This year, because he probably realized that, okay, she not go fire me. Or, <laughs> or, alright, last year was like a, like him dipping toe in the water to see how it feels. No, he know how the water feels so he can dive in. He's fully in, immersed, 100% coach. Don't be sneezed about my feelings, nothing. It's all about running and running fast and doing well. I like it though. I love it. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what you want. You know, and the fact that I don't have to come home and retell Matthew everything that happens at training because he was there. You know what I mean? That's, it's really, it's really amazing. I'm really happy. And I'm really, um, what's the word? Appreciate it. I'm grateful that Matthew decided to take on this role in addition to the many others he has. <laughs>